So. Yeah, good now. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Alex. So yes, I'm Alexander Prent, and uh, on behalf of Marta uh, Clucking from uh, Göttingen University, and the whole team behind this this effort, I'm, I'm giving this presentation. Now, the initiative here is uh, co-funded by the European Union as a project uh, ran by the Committee on Data from the International Science Council, and also co-funded by OSCOPE. It is really the One Geochemistry Initiative, and that's aiming to bring together uh, international groups around geochemistry, so the analysis of rocks and the chemistry of rocks. Here, very aptly named uh, the title, specifying locally and harmonizing globally in terms of development of vocabularies. So what does a local community need and how can we make that interoperable in terms of a global system? Well, geochemical data is very relevant to society and particularly applies to six of the sustainable development goals in terms of clean water, affordable energy, clean energy, decent work, industry innovation, infrastructure, climate action, life on land. There are six of the main, the direct um, sustainable development goals that geochemistry has an impact on and really has an impact on, on most or not all. So as you can imagine, standardizing such data is of uh, great importance that we can do much more with it. And um, when we lost and we can reuse it, we can find it. Here's an example of um, that Stuart actually helped writ write in um, last year where, where an example of not having standardized units leads to disaster. And uh, the Mars orbiter that was meant to orbit Mars never did, it crashed because some teams had used metric units and some other teams had used imperial units. So um, a loss of multiple years of effort and hundreds of millions of dollars. So if we were to speak the same language, we would have completed the Tower of Babel and therefore standardization and vocabulary is so, so important. Now geochemical data uh, in itself is very specific. People analyze um, one or two isotopes and they spend a lifetime doing so. Now, if you get those isotopes and the values analyzed in a list or a table, you can fill um, not even a USB thumb drive with a lifetimes of work. So these long tail data, they can be on, on a computer. Uh, you can work with them on a computer. So there's no real need of super organized um, data storage as with astronomy or climate and physics. They need powerful computers to do the data reduction. So you need natural to organize that a bit better when you have uh, shared funds needed to do that science. So it's very spe specialized, low volume, difficult to find, collected by a lot of people. And this may not be the result of, of having so many societies in, and unions, but um, it's definite that there are a lot of different geochemical societies and unions and national organizations. And therefore, it'd be great to, to harmonize the efforts around data through um, more organized initiative, collaborate and coordinate that better. So we got together with a group of enthusiasts from the um, uh, EPOS plate observatory system in Europe, EarthCam, Astromat in the US, uh, DGS GeoRock in uh, Germany, and Australia with Leslie, myself, and Kirsten Elgar in uh, Germany again at the GFZ Data Services, and also one partner from NFDI for Earth in this case. So just a just like the NFDI for CHEM, as Stuart mentioned just now. And this initiative is really 
aiming to facilitate better science or generation and acceleration of generation of new knowledge in geochemistry and uh, discoveries. So very important to us is that we know where the data comes from, how it's been generated, and, and therefore we can trust and interpret and reuse data. So with that comes how to do that. And as we have a community that's very diverse and quite fragmented, how do you get them together? Now, the first thing would be indeed to speak the same language, to communicate, and therefore controlled vocabularies would be fantastic to have. Enabling um, the um, real interoperability of all these fragmented data systems and, and repositories and, and groups of people. So. What do we need is an, an overview. What, what, where do we start? Okay, so getting together in one geochemistry was a, um, already a great start. So Georoc, PetDB, they've got massive amounts of geochemical analyses and Astromat and the AGN, the Oscope Geochemistry Network, are working together in getting a vocabulary registered with uh, Research Vocabularies Australia. Part of that is to have a vocabulary about samples. How do you describe the sample? What's necessary? What, what concepts do we have? And make a full sample description because that's the core identity used to generate data around and everything is hopefully linked to that sample. It's geospatial location. Then looking at the analysis, going to the analytical methods and in the sample description, we've worked with MINDAT. They've got a fantastic description of all minerals and lithologies you can basically imagine. And they're working on that to make the machine actionable, machine readable. So you can look at that again in a different way. So components um, of a vocabulary would be the sample and the analysis, and then what uh, we have looked at how they have these commonalities analysis would analyze the lithology a sample would be containing information about the lithology of that sample for example so description of the rock is uh, lithology in this case so there you see a couple of components of a vocabulary and how we can have we are aiming to have separate vocabularies that are connected so a vocabulary for a sample consisting of a vocabulary of a location and a vocabulary or terms and definitions about that location and the specimen. Now you can look at that in a different way again. What components do we want to address? So what's the um, feature of interest here on the right? And how was the, um, uh, what geological information is used in that feature of interest? what's been observed and what's what sensor and sampler and, and actuator have we have we used and what kind of uh, initiatives have been um, busy with describing these things or providing vocabularies and terminologies for all these components now here i think it's very uh, apt to hear about the uh, drum and the initiative of Simon Cox and of course the IUPAC, what, what's what's been going on there. Geochemistry is is really uh, geology and chemistry combined. So being maybe at that knife edge in, in the middle, we never got ourselves organized to be either fully involved in chemistry or in geology. So never really developing these glossaries, but combining what's already out there can bringing um, much more organization to this community. So hence, um, working together with them is really important. And we already do through um, a, the bigger project, the World Fair project, the uh, CoData project. What else has been done in the geochemistry domain? There's a lot of papers out there that describe best practices and we've in collating these efforts and the aim is to make these best practices in more machine actionable uh, best practices and terminologies. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the middle is that 
that uh, gray uh, paper that was produced by the Geological Society of America. And uh, there was a um, call to ask the community, can we pre please provide standards and recommendations for all these various techniques that we use in geochemistry? And there's quite a many. Here are listed 11. You might be able to read that. But other efforts in um, in NASA and um, yeah, space space analyses have listed up to 70 instruments that, that produce different uh, data and basically different data up to 140 data types. So you can imagine the um, the diversity. Now I talked a little bit about MINDAT and how they've got that fantastic uh, store of uh, hierarchical lithologies, completely described, easy to find. And they're making their uh, platform into a machine actionable platform. And like you discussed, Stuart, where, where we have to go away from or create machine actionable P PDFs or make sure that the PDFs we have and the glossaries we have become machine actionable. And that's something MIN that has uh, got funded for and through the AGN in Australia, uh, they've been collaborating with MIN that to use that hierarchical list of lithologies, so rock descriptions and mineral names in, um, in their platforms describing and storing geochemical data. Now, not all of these terms are needed, so subsets can be made of those terms and, and uh, descriptions. And sometimes international groups will need different uh, rock names. For example, Australia has a very particular weathering of its, of its uh, surface, and that's described by very particular names, so that can be additions to MINDAT's vocabulary when they, when they have it online, and that can be added. And together with, with EarthCam GeoRock and AGN Astromat, we are working on producing uh, vocabulary on Research Vocabularies Australia. And um, each of these vocabularies will be um, registered as a fair enabling resource, which brings me to uh, our uh, project that is funded by the European Union. And it's not not our project. Geochemistry is here and little part of it. One of 11 case studies in the CODATA RAN World Fair project. And the World Fair project has um, set up this um, real interoperability or cross domain interoperability um, target. And one way to do that is through the fair implementation profiles, which basically list technologies that platforms use to bring data in the public domain and to make it machine actionable. Now that exercise is, is pretty complicated and on purpose it's a bit small here on the right, this fair enabling uh, implementation profile asks questions about a repository uh, and the technologies that the repository use to make data fair. And you can see here on the left, how fair is not just findable, actionable, interoperable, and reusable, but it's pretty complicated. Each um, letter of the acronym has multiple components. And if you address that, you can come to a convergence. And this is uh, going on. I should discuss this first, sorry where EarthCam and, for example, uh, GeoRock, they both fill out this FAIR implementation profile and we get to know the FAIR enabling resources for each of the um, projects. And this is basically showing the technology on the left and the technology on the right. And then we can have, with that knowledge, we can create how these two technologies can interoperate, how they can work together. and with that, we can really come to convergence. And another way to come to convergence is just simply to sit around the table and say, okay, you've got a big database, I've got a big, big database, then let's talk about making the vocabulary that describes these databases the same. And that's been going on in the, 
in the last couple of months with this um, two large databases, GeoRock and PetDB, and together they have 39 million single data values. And I guess- Alex, Alex 15 minutes. Okay, I guess if you, if you look at that, that's a large amount of data that has the same language. And I always compare that a little bit to uh, language in general. If a lot of people speak English as we do, it's quite a, attractive to learn that language. So one geochemistry will become a co-data working group that will bring together a geochemistry community around data organization and uh, via collaboration with existing initiatives such as the, the DRUM, IUPAC, One Geochemistry, and really working with groups that have, re have invented the wheel, not reinventing the wheel. So with that, we're going towards a fair geochemical data ecosystem. Now get involved, uh, scan the QR code to get into the Slack channel and uh, you're, I'm happy for you to contact me uh, at this email address, alexander at oscope.org.au. And you can always have a look at the webpage on geochemistry webpage there on the left. Thanks, that's 